Now let's take uh, the example of uh, static and non-static. Okay, so that will again make you clarify. So what I will do is basically I will create a class and I will say that would be a static example. Example, right? And uh, okay, so before before understanding this, let's understand. You know, basically when we talk about this new, what will happen inside? Okay. So this new keyword, it is very important in, uh, because uh, when you talk about, you know, making an object, basically, again, some more internal uh, fundamentals of Java will be applicable. And that is what is something called constructor. Okay. So constructor is, uh, you know, uh, if, if we talk about uh, a class and objects relationship, okay. And when you talk about new, basically, it in between this, there is something called cons constructor being called okay uh, now i will give you an example of uh, beautiful example of how to understand this right so when you talk about uh, l l let's take an example of you know uh, the brick maker okay so brick maker you, you, you might have seen right so in villages or basically uh, there is a lot of mud okay the mi mixture of mud and water okay thick thick uh, mixture of mud and water and they are having some frames in which they need to put uh, that mixture and automatically it will it will get in shape right so it, it it's like kind of rectangular or overall you know cube uh, cubical shape of uh, that brick and on the brick there would be a mark okay mark of like different companies like k and k or whatever i mean there are a lot there there, there might be like you know different uh, different different markers uh, or different different companies whose like watermark kind of thing or logo will be printed on the brick okay so let's say there is a brick maker okay and that's what actually i'm trying to con I'm trying to compare it with constructor. Okay, what what is the help of constructor? What is the function of constructor basically? So class, you can consider a, you can consider the class as to be the you know that mud, the mixture of mud and water that is a thick mixture. Okay, the constructor is the person who is having let's say five to ten frames or it it, it so in, in in when you talk about constructor, so each constructor would be the frame. Uh, that uh, that brick maker will have okay so now if you ask that give me the brick of this company so what he will do is he will keep, he will pick the mud he will put it in the frame of that company uh, of uh, you know in the frame of that company that you are asking uh, to him to make and then he will give you the brick of that company okay then you will ask okay i i want the brick from the second company okay so there are five or ten companies okay so it means that that constructor uh, is basically five or ten frames that a brick maker will have and he will produce the object so whatever is getting produced produce is like the brick with having the which which is having the logo on it are you getting me so class is basically that mud the constructor is a frame okay which the brick maker will have and the object is the output of that that mud being placed in that frame and the, with the logo and everything it comes in a shape with the logo on it okay this analogy is completely workable to understand this concept of between the class constructor and object. So class is that mud, constructor is the frame in which you just need to put the mud and object is your brick. Okay. So and that analogy still fits that one with that class, you can have multiple objects with different, different variety or variety of object means uh, you just change some of the typical parameters of that class and you will be coming up with lot and lot objects out of that class. Okay. This is very very important to understand the relay is a relation because a new grammar I mean when you when you start learning the Java there are a lot of things that you need to you know figure it out the relations among them okay now what will happen is when you talk about this chain of object where the lion animal and object okay so if I create the lion object from the lion class by using new okay by by using the new keyword it means the lion's class constructor will be called okay now where is the constructor okay if you see the lion class or let's say horse class where is the constructor in this okay because this is just the main method these are the overrides from the its parents object okay then where is the constructor so the rule of java is basically when you don't define any constructor automatically java compiler will put a non parameterized or you can say just you know zero parameters or non-parameterized constructor automatically in your class okay and how it looks like if you define something like the name of your class okay 
and you do not have any parameter in that and it should be public public animal and there is no body in this. so there is a body but you don't write anything and it is a legitimate constructor of your class called not animal uh, I can have horse over here sorry. okay because I'm I'm this is the constructor of horse because we are in the horse class right this is called constructor okay uh, and this is that frame basically okay in which you need to put the mud and it will just give you the object currently it does not ex currently it is not accepting any parameters and it does not have any body so this is perfect uh, example I mean this is the statement that your compiler Java compiler is going to put when you start compiling this class okay when you start compiling this code in, in, in into class right so there are so many things hidden on the screen that the Java compiler automatically takes care behind the scene okay and this is one of the act that Java compiler does okay the other thing that we have seen is even though you don't you even even though you don't extend this class to object class by default what your Java compiler will do it will just say extends and it will put object class like this okay so this is perfectly all right either you do it or by default it will be done by the Java compiler okay you don't see it on the screen but behind the scene when you decompile your already compiled classes you will see that oh my god I did not put this extends object how it had how it came over here okay you will just notice that okay so there is something called Java decompiler uh, command which you can just you know use on the compile uh, compiled version of Java class and you will get it right so let's say we had uh, this where is the dot class we had yesterday you know created hello world hello world dot class right so let me just try to show you uh, we are using is there any something called Java D So currently it is not uh, available on my environment but there is a command called java d that will help you to decompile any dot class okay and you will get the code back okay in that code you will find this extends object okay even though if you don't write it here and use this code in order to compile the class you will get the java d okay so it will tell you more that how you know java compiler behaves the more you understand the java compiler the more you will be comfortable with java okay so I will say when I say new as uh, as soon as I try to make the object of lion as a new object okay that uh, we have tried over here in terms of horse as soon as we do this uh, new horse horse on is new horse this is the com this is the constructor that will be called in order to make this object okay again the constructor if you don't define it by default it will be defined by your Java compiler behind the scene and this is that exactly what the java compiler will put so constructor uh, that java compiler will put okay and you don't know it okay and you need not to even put i mean uh, it will you you just need to so basically uh, you can pass some parameters again these are like a, in in this normal braces you can pass some arguments and in this curly braces you have the body of your uh, you know the constructor now sometimes it is confusing because if you see that this method looks similar to your constructor okay but there are a lot of lot many differences first thing is that this you can you yes we can we can print something in constructor if you really want I will show you so uh, let's put something so I, I will show that example separately I am just trying to tell you for that by default this is the uh, this is the you know uh, definition of the constructor that the compiler will put okay so basically this is called con con constructor that java compiler will put compiler yes we can do everything in the constructor as soon as this statement get executed whatever you have written in this constructor will be executed okay that is how uh, the, what the, that is the work of constructor you can define multiple constructors first of all now I can define one more constructor with the same name but then this time 
I need to change let's say it will get some int number okay and that is perfectly all right okay this is called overloading this is the concept of overloading where you are changing the signature just keep the name same but changing the signature so instead of uh, int let's say the another constructor is accepting one parameter called a string I will say name again this is all perfectly all right okay so we have defined three constructor it means that these are three frames in which you need to put your mud and it will be like three separate output bricks or you know so one frame can be used multiple times it means that uh, one company wants 1000 brick of one com uh, one person wants one company's 1000 brick you can use this frame frame and you can create 1000 bricks out of this frame you can create another 1000 bricks from this frame and you can again another create 1000 bricks so 3000 uh, total bricks 1000 1000 for each company it means that from each frame although the class is similar are you getting me this is the concept of class constructor and the corresponding object okay from one class you are making it's still 3000 object but each object may have some different logo on it right and that is the way you can define multiple constructor and this is something called constructor overloading constructor over overloading okay and this is the concept or this is a, you know difference between overriding and overloading so basically if you talk talk about here in the method level there is a overriding where you cannot change the signature and if it's a sign if you are changing the signature it is no more overriding it is overloading so the the only difference or you can say if you just try to remember the difference between overloading and overriding is that in overloading the signature is changed only the name will be similar in overriding signature will be like uh, signature will be same i mean sorry signature should not change only the internal body will be changed in overloading you can change internal body as well but overloading and overriding uh, you can just differentiate on the signature basis okay signature means uh, what is the name of method or name of constructor or how many parameters it is having what are the types of parameters and that's it so till here that is the signature this is the signature this is the signature uh, yes go ahead Payment, uh, mm -hmm. this is a uh, constructor overloading do we have method overloading yes, also have, because yes yes we do have method overloading also but generally it is very seldom used because uh, uh, you know uh, there are very specific cases where you will overload the method okay because generally method is there only for overriding okay I, I will tell you the concept when we talk about after like 15 minutes we will start talking about uh, abstract classes interfaces and everything where you will get more clarity on what is what is the purpose of overriding why we do that basically okay but yes for answering your question overloading is on both the level that is on constructor overloading as well as method can also be overloaded okay okay thank you so this is called constructor overloading where we are actually just changing the things okay so you can define multiple constructor in the same class the only thing is only promise is that you need to keep the name of them all or same only you can change their parameters number of parameters and their types that's it if you keep on doing that you can create millions of constructor in the within the class and you can use any one of that constructor in order to make an object of that class are you getting me so this is this is we are creating yes we are creating and then uh, this is with this first constructor okay that is i will say this is constructor first and this is constructor 2 and this is constructor 3 and I can just I will I, and uh, as soon as you can say print okay I, I, I don't want to confuse over here uh, let I will do it separately okay so that is what is called constructor example let me do that now so cons constructor example have that public static void minute okay so this is my constructor example what I will do is I will have some variables defined okay so I will say uh, int number okay 
and then a string name so these are my two variables what I will do is I will this is my main method here I am going to create the and let me define some constructor first so public constructor constructor can be private and public both okay and let me just you know assign number to it int num and let me print print sys o the number is equal the number is I will just say plus and put num over here okay the second constructor is some different constructor it will public constructor example and I, I will pass a string to it now a string name And I will give. I mean, I will. I will just execute this, right? So we do our body also now. The, the string is or the name is. Name is. I will say, Kadoop. Oh, we can pass name also. So just leave the right name. Okay. Now here we can. Now, as soon as I put this to our, these are called argument constructor because they are accepting argument, right? So some is like single argument and constructor, multiple argument constructor kind of thing, right? If you do not define anything, there would be by default a no argument constructor will be put by the compiler. As soon as you define any compile, any as soon as you define any constructor, the rule is that compiler is not no going not going to you know uh, put any compile uh, any constructor from his side. Okay, if you define your own constructor, compiler is uh, not doing anything. If you don't define any constructor, okay, no matter it is argument or non-argument, if you do not define any constructor, compiler will put on its own one no argument constructor in your class. Now let's me make uh, this is the area where we are where we need to make the object of it now. So I will say constructor kind of example. Uh, let's say object one is equal to new, and I need to call the constructor that is defined. So it will automatically give me option only these are two options and that is what is called constructor overriding you when you have multiple options in order to create uh, the object of your class that is what is called constructor overloading right so i do if you see these two top uh, top options one is given constructor example where we can pass the number integer and it will be printed and another is uh, the you know a string name that is the parameter that is defined in that so we can we can use both of them one by one Okay, and let me pass number as three, and let me. This is object two. Okay, object two. New constructor. And this time I'm going to put name over here. Okay, so let's put Hadoop over here. So this is the a string parameter we are passing to it now right and that's it i mean we just make it even though we don't use it but as soon as we this estimate statement get executed this whole body will be executed as soon as this statement get executed this whole body will be executed and since this will be automatically executed this number is the number is and the name is going to be printed okay so i'm not doing anything now i'm just executing it so i'm set the color um, just run as java application And see, these two guys got printed. The number is three that we have passed over here, and the name is Hadoop that we have passed here. So, we have created two different objects from the same class using two different constructor. Okay. Now just try to understand. Class is your mud. Okay. The frame is your constructor. Somebody is making it who is a brick maker. Okay. And the output is your object. Okay. So this is the brick we have got. This is one brick of one company. This is another brick of the second company. Are you getting me? Because there we are doing two frames over here, through which we have used in order to make the object of the same class. Now, if you try to visualize this in the heap stack diagram, how does it look? Okay. Because whatever execution we are looking at our screen, they're all going in a JVM. Okay. 
so you do have a JVM okay let, let me just you know this is what is a JVM look like okay I, if I say JVM heap not JVM basically this is a heap of JVM heap means the RAM part of your JVM where the object gets existed I mean after the creation where the object will be the object after creation will be lying in your heap okay and there is a part of heap where what we call heap as it is and there is something called a stack okay in this stack all your variables will coming will be coming right so basically if you see this code there are two variables one is object one and one is object two that will lie over here object one and object two sorry and we do a two object of our constructor example so one i will say this is brick one and this is brick two brick two okay so one is just printing the num number and another printing the name this object is pointing to this and this object is pointing to that okay so in heap we are having object in stack we do have variables and actually it is stack why well, it is said to be stack because it is like method uh, one one method is calling another method another method is calling so method also will exist in stack okay everything that is not an object will be you know just like kind of variables and everything they are all like uh, uh, they they are that is the part of heap only i mean this is complete memory part only okay it is not something outside of your jvm so within the within the memory we do have one heap area and one is stack area this is what is called heap stack diagram okay through which you can understand so this is actually pointing the location where so in heap there are like this is memory location so let's say my memory location is x102 this is x103 is my memory location where this brick 1 and brick 2 you know it starts with so x102 so the x102 is a memory location from where uh, i mean like uh, from where your brick one object is starting and it will occupy further more memory location in that in order to have complete uh, you know of it so this object one is holding the position of this x102 and this object two is holding the position of x103 that is more memory location it is pointing to that memory location okay so whenever you start using this object one it will take you to the brick one whenever you start using object two, it will take you to the brick two that is the object in heap are you getting me so this is that meaning of uh, this two two things okay object one and object two there are being a variable of type what type constructor example type okay it means that they can point to any object that is belonging to the ob uh, constructor example so it can point uh, to the objects of this type okay so this is called heap stack okay you can just point to the different objects in heap now when you talk about this this diagram okay so still when i say create a new lion out of the lion class it means the no argument constructor of lion will be called but prior to that it depends on the animal constructor because lion will you know inherit all the uh, uh, all the you know uh, non static methods or whatever is belonging which can be overridden that is like all the public methods of the animal you know it will use them to override so in prior to creation of lion the animal object needs to be created okay that is how i mean before you born your father should have born and before your father born your grandfather should have born are you getting me this is the same concept again again it is an object to render concept before you create the lion object the object's object will be created so the new object will be created first then the animals object will be created and then finally your lion will be created so i will say o new animal and then finally your new lion okay this is called the constructor chaining or chain of constructor and before you create the object of the last class all your top classes object should be created first okay so even when you say lion lion is equal to new lion okay it means that you are trying to create the object of lion internally first object will be created as an objects object okay then will be created your animals object and then finally your lion's object will be created okay just like your grandfather will born first then your father born and then you right in that order okay so if you are trying to get born all your parents should have born 
okay that is what is called constructor chaining or you know so each one of them have constructor even though if you don't define there are there has to be a new uh, no argument constructor in each of these class okay even if you do not them explicitly in the class are you getting me so that as soon as you start making an object all its previous dependent classes objects will be uh, no objects will be created so does this give some clarity of understanding of how the constructor chaining and object creation will happen and what is the meaning of class and object and what is the interrelationship between class and object how the constructor comes in between what is overriding what is overriding there are a lot of concept we have talked about now okay and you should now get you know the better and better idea of the java now any questions is of now okay yeah shen sentil you are having uh, any question oh, no no okay. not questions okay. i mean just okay. to the concept thanks okay, okay.